Hi, this is Julie Harland, and I'm your math gal. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com, where you could search for any of my videos organized by topic. This is part eight of an equation of a circle, and we're going to do this problem. Find the center and radius and any intercept of the circle whose equation is 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2x plus 2y minus 1 equals 0. And then graph the circle. All right, now in order to find the center and radius, we want to put this in standard form. So we'll start out with our equation, 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2x plus 2y minus 1 equals 0. And we know we have to like group the x's together and the y's together, you know, complete the square. But the first thing I want to notice is the coefficient of x squared and y squared are the same, and that is exactly why this is going to be an equation of a circle, when both of these coefficients are the same. So let's divide everything by that, because to complete the square, you want to just have a plain old x squared and a plain old y squared. So our first step will just be to divide all the terms on both sides by that coefficient of 2. So I now have x squared plus y squared plus x plus y minus one-half equals zero. Okay, we're going to proceed. Remember, we're not afraid of fractions. We, we can deal with this. Let's put the x squared terms together, the x squared and the x terms. So we have x squared plus x. Now, just to make sure it's very clear that you see the coefficient of x, I'm going to write that as plus one x, okay? And we know we're going to have to add something to complete the square. I'm going to do the same thing for the y squared and the y term, so I'm going to go ahead and put 1y, and I'm going to add something here. Then I'm going to put my constant on the other side, the 1 half, and I'm going to add two numbers, right, for whatever I do, put in the first parentheses and whatever I add in the second parentheses. So this is a reminder that whatever I add over here, I'm going to have to add on the right side as well. All right, so we have to come down here and figure out what the perfect square would be. So it would be x, now, plus half the coefficient. All right, so if the coefficient's 1, what's half of 1? It's 1 half. So I square that to figure out what I'm going to have to add up here. So that's going to be 1 fourth, because 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And I'm going to have the same thing with a y, right? I'll have half of its coefficient is one half, so I'm going to add one fourth over here as well. So I'm adding one fourth twice, right, for each of these. In this parentheses, I add a one fourth. In this parentheses, I add a one fourth. So now I have on the right hand side, what's a half plus a fourth plus a fourth? Hopefully you know that's going to be one. You could change and get a common denominator if you want and figure it out that way. One half is two fourths, so you'd have two fourths plus one fourth plus one fourth, which is four fourths, which is one. In any case, you gotta add those fractions. So now I've got the standard form for a circle, right? So what is the center? It'll be negative one half, negative one half, correct? If you forget, you take what's in the parentheses, set it equal to zero, and that tells you what goes here. And the radius will be what? Well, what squared equals one is one. Now remember, I could either write this as one or one squared, since one is the same thing as one squared, if you want to see it in that form to see the radius. But I'm going to take that off and just leave it as one for now. So I have found the center, and I have found the radius. The other thing I was asked to do was to find any intercept. So let's see if there's any intercepts. So, so far, we've got uh, part of our answer done. We have our center of our circle, got the radius of the circle. Now let's go ahead and figure out our, if we have any x or y intercepts. All right, let's find our x-intercepts. 
if there are any. So to find your x-intercepts, you let y equal to 0. So you're going to have to plug in a 0 for y in both of these places. So we have 2x squared, well, that'll be a 0 term, plus 2x, that'll be a 0 term, minus 1 equals 0. Well, this does not factor, so we'll have to use the quadratic equation. So what's the quadratic equation? It's x equals negative b, so it'll be negative 2, right, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 2 squared, minus 4ac, 4 times 2 times negative 1, all over 2a, 2 times 2. So if we simplify inside that square root, what do we have here? 2 squared is 4, and we've got to do 4 times 2 times negative 1, and there's a minus sign. So we'll end up with a 4 plus 8 over 4, which is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12, right? Now I'm going to write the square root of 12 as 4 times 3. Okay, so 4 plus 8 is 12, that's 4 plus 3, it's all over 4. Since, and I did that because 4 is a perfect square, so that I could take the 4 out of the square root. So I have negative 2 plus or minus 2, square roots of 3, all over 4. Now, you could simplify this a little bit further by factoring out a 2 out of the numerator, so you have a 2 times negative 1 plus or minus square root of 3. And at the denominator you have 2 times 2, right? That's the same as 4. I wrote it that way so you could see what cancels. So basically, x is either negative 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2 or negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. So our intercepts for x, x-intercepts, will be negative 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, 0, right, so we put in 0 for y, and negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2, 0. The question is, where is that? Right? So most of us can't really tell where that is exactly, so you could put this in your calculator, negative 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2, and get an approximation. Square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. So if I'm going to plug this number in, negative 1 plus 1.7 over 2, notice you have 1.7 minus 1 in the numerator, so that's just going to be 0.7 over 2. I'm sorry, not negative, but just positive, 0.7 over 2, which is 0.35. So this is approximately that x-intercept. So the approximate first x-intercept will be 0.35, I'll just say that is 0.4, Zero. Okay, this is not exactly, but it gives you an idea about where it's at. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I would do negative 1 minus 1.7. So what would happen if I put negative 1, if I change this to negative minus 1.7? I would have negative 2.7 in the numerator over 2 is negative 1.35, so this would be approximately, I'm just trying to do this approximately, negative 1.40. Now, keep in mind, this is very approximate. These are the approximate x-intercepts, and you could do that all in your calculator by putting in, you know, using parentheses, negative 1 plus square root of 3, putting it all over 2, and you, you get somewhere around here. It's not exact. So these are the approximate x-intercepts. So let's write that down. So again, here was our original problem. We were asked to find the center and radius. We did that. And to find any, find any intercepts, we've just found the x-intercepts. All right, so we need to find the y-intercepts. 
So if we want to find the y-intercepts, we're going to let x equal 0, and we get this equation, which looks exactly like the previous equation when we put in 0 for y. So when all is said and done and you solve for y, you'll end up getting, after you use the quadratic formula, the same exact values you got when you did it for x, which was negative 1 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. And this time we put in 0 for x, so we would have for the y-intercepts, we're putting in 0 for x. These are the exact values. And then when we approximate it, let's see, this was the 1.7 minus 1. This was 0.4. That's what that approximated to, and this was negative 1.4. So let's see what it looks like so far. Again, here's the problem we we're given. We found the center, the radius. Now we have now found the exact x and y intercepts, and in green I've just said the approximate. Last thing to do is graph the circle. So we have all this information. Um, remember the radius was 1. Center was negative one-half, negative one-half. So I've drawn a coordinate system where each tick mark is one-half. So our center is right here. Now remember, negative one-half, negative one-half is right here. The radius is one. So to graph it, really just need to go to the right one space from that center, up one space, to the left one space, and down one space. And we can go ahead and graph a circle. But we also do know a little bit more information if we want to approximate the x and y intercepts. The x intercepts is at about 0.4, so it's somewhere maybe around here. And negative 1.4, somewhere around here. It just helps you with guidelines. And for the y intercepts, we have 0 0.4, so that's about right here. And we've got negative 1.4, which is about here. It just gives you a few more ordered pairs. And of course, it's symmetric, so we know there's one over here, right, etc. But basically, you just want to make sure that your x-intercepts look like they're in about in the right place. Not a very good circle I'm drawing. You get the idea what it would look like. And so now we've completed the problem. We've got the center, the radius, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and we've graphed the circle. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where you can view all of my videos which are organized by topic.